I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at free tempo recording. Now this was a feature introduced with 10.7.5, and it has the potential to be really interesting in terms of the way that we work, and exactly how we want Logic to apply tempo to the music that we make. Now in order for free tempo recording to be available to you, the first thing we need to do is to slightly configure our Logic project to do that. And the reason why I haven't done that in advance is because there are a couple of things I want to show you. So firstly, if we control click anywhere in the gray area up here at the top of our transport bar, we have a chance to customize the control bar and display. Sorry, the control bar, the middle section is the transport bar. So the control bar, what I want to do is to open this up and here I have a chance to add anything I might like to add to my project in terms of potential buttons or features that I might want to be used through my project. And there are two in particular that I want to add here. Firstly, free tempo recording, the feature which we're going to be looking at in this video, but also capture recording, which is here. Now this feature has been in Logic for a long time, this idea of capture recording, and I want to show you the difference between that and free tempo recording first. So having finished with my choices, I can just click outside it, and now there are two new buttons within my control bar display. Now free tempo recording is this version, if you like, of the record button. This is the regular record button, and free tempo recording is here. So we can see that it's obviously still a sort of round record button, but it's got a slightly different functionality. And now what we've also got is capture recording, which has changed in its appearance. So if you were used to using this feature, this button has now been redesigned to kind of differentiate it from free tempo recording. Let's start with capture recording. A lot of people don't know this, but from the moment you turn Logic on, from a MIDI perspective, it's listening. So in other words, if what I want to do is just to sort of jam around an idea and it just so happens that I hit on something really interesting, I haven't got to try and remember it and go, okay, what exactly did I play there? Capture recording is listening. So in other words, if I just happen to press play, I'm actually going to turn the metronome off, we don't need it. If I suddenly just decided to play the piano, And I thought, oh yeah, actually I like that. I wonder if I could use something there. Then the whole idea of capture recording is that if I now press this button, everything I've just played appears as a region. Because I was in play mode, Logic recorded it anyway. And that's really worth knowing because a lot of people, I've seen this happen a lot, just go, oh, I've just played something amazing and what was it? And I can't remember it. Well, it was there all along. All you need to do is to press capture recording and there it is, it'll be back. But of course, in no way does this little jam that I have just been working on conform to the tempo of a project that I might be working on. It hasn't been played alongside anything else. So whilst it's a really nice way of being able to sort of bring a scratch pad of a musical idea into my project, it's not gonna help me in terms of making something that has the potential to either drive the tempo of my project or conform to the tempo of my project if I've already got some ideas that I want to work it alongside. So instead, what I'm gonna do is to throw away this brilliant idea. And instead, what I'm gonna do is to look at free tempo recording instead, which is the button next to it. So what exactly does this do? Well, free tempo recording allows me to do a number of things. Let's suppose I want to jam an idea a little bit like the one that I just played, but I do want it to in some way conform to or drive the tempo of the project that I'm working on. In other words, let's suppose I play something and say, yeah, okay, the tempo of that, I'd like that to be the tempo of my project. So Logic, can you work out what tempo I played? That would be one example. Or potentially what I want to do instead is to say, no, I know what the tempo of my project is and I want to apply it to this region that has been recorded free from tempo to effectively try and make it fit within the context of my project. And there are a couple of options here available to us. So let's look at, um, let's have a look at them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to play a slightly different phrase and we'll see exactly how we can begin to work like this. So when I press free tempo recording, I'm not going to hear a metronome. Unlike a regular recording, I'm gonna be metronome free and I'm just gonna be in a position to make the recording I want without thinking I've got to be absolutely on the beat. Okay, now the moment I press stop, Logic wants to know what I want to do with this phrase. Now, I've tried to play it in a relatively musical way. It's not just absolutely bang in time, it's basically ebbing and flowing a little bit and it's moving and it's breathing. So with that in mind, what's the first option available to me? Well, 
as it's kind of the first thing that exists within my piece, I might decide that what I want to do is to ask Logic to calculate the tempi of the individual phrases that I've played or the individual bars and effectively create a tempo map from those. In other words, I want to apply the region tempo to the project that I'm working on. Okay, so what that does when I press apply is that Logic goes, okay, fine, I will create a tempo map for you. Now, where exactly is that? Well, let's have a look in global tracks. Here is the tempo track for my project. And what Logic's done is to say, okay, I think this is the tempo of your piece from one bar to the next. Now, a couple of things about this are a little bit wonky. I can see straight away that the region that I've played isn't absolutely starting on the downbeat. But nevertheless, let's have a listen to the phrase that I've played. And this time we will put the metronome in and we'll see how what I've played conforms to tempo. We'll see what Logic's done with it, in other words. Okay, so I think that if I was to move this region so they absolutely start at the beginning of bar two, which I can do by selecting it and then pressing the semicolon button so that the region moves to exactly the playhead, we might have quite an interesting little tempo map for this project. Okay, now all of the notes within my phrase are where I played them. And this is the next crucial thing to understand about free tempo recording. None of this is quantized. This technology is designed to take your inherent sense of timing and rhythm and the breathing in the performances that you make and make them part of your project. And it is by no means a sort of magic bullet. We've already seen that I've had to move this region. And I would definitely say that you know, I've watched a few other people making videos on this topic, and it's fair to say that a lot of those are pretty finessed. You can sort of tell that they've been edited pretty heavily in order to make it feel like every time you use this technology, it's going to start on the downbeat and it's going to produce the perfect tempo map. And the reality of the situation is, no, it's not. What it's actually going to do is it's going to do its best. And Will and I were talking about this a little while ago, and he's absolutely right. This technology is going to get better. There's no doubt if this is a feature that Logic like, they're going to continue to improve it and adapt it. But for now, you need to know that it's kind of doing its best, and you're gonna find that some interesting little mistakes are gonna get thrown up along the way, and you're gonna to have to adapt some of the MIDI that you're working with. But this isn't bad. What I've now got is a really interesting little tempo map. I've still got all of the performance in my project, which hasn't been quantized. And of course, quantizer is available to me because it's MIDI. And so as a result of that, I've sort of got a nice place to start. Another thing I need to be slightly careful about, if I just zoom in, is that if I wanted to repeat this phrase, not only did it not start at the right point, it's also slightly overlapping the end of bar six. So what I would need to do would be to trim this region down to make sure that it's exactly four bars long before I then repeat it. You also need to know, of course, that if I was just simply going to repeat this phrase, it's not going to take the tempo information with it as well. So what I would also need to do, as well as copying the region, would be to select the tempo map that's been created by selecting all of these nodes here and also copying these so that they restart again here at the beginning of bar six. So if I want to use this phrase and have it create a tempo map and then apply that across all of my regions, there are a couple of things I need to know. But there's also no doubt that it was quite fun to play something and ask Logic to calculate tempo rather than me having to conform to the tempo of the project that I was working on. Okay, so the first function there that we've looked at is the idea of applying the region to the tempo of our project. Okay. So I've just recorded my phrase again, and this time we're going to explore the second option available to us, which is the idea of applying an average region tempo to the project. So what we saw in the previous example was that Logic created a new tempo node, every bar, mapping the way that I'd played. This time what we're gonna do is to say, yeah, I don't want varying tempo, I want one tempo which reflects the average tempo that I've just played this phrase in at. So if I select this option and hit apply, instead of loads of bits of tempo information, instead what we're going to get is an average one node tempo for this particular phrase. Let's hear how this sounds with the metronome on.
Okay, it sounds pretty consistent, which is great. So what it's done, again, is it's averaged it out. Now then, part of the reason it sounds consistent is because I played pretty consistently. Remember, this still isn't quantized. So what it has done, and I had no way of knowing that I had played at, well, let's find out exactly what the tempo is. Yeah, my favorite tempo, 85.6137 beats per minute. It's the tempo I always work at. So you, I didn't, I had no idea, of course, that this was going to be the speed at which I was playing, but it's averaged it out and it sounds like, listening to it against the metronome, more or less, most of that phrase is in time and that's great. It's allowed me to decide that that's going to be the tempo of the project that I want to work at. So actually, provided the phrase that you play is relatively consistent, those notes are going to be in time. Now remember, if I had really sort of drawn out the last few notes, they would have participated, if you like, in logic averaging out that tempo and it could be that without quantize, those notes sounded like they were dragging a little bit, or because they were slower, notes earlier in the phrase felt like they were rushing a little bit. So again, this technology isn't going to be perfect, but it's certainly going to allow you not to sort of try and think, okay, what tempo do I want to work at? Use your musicality to set that for you. And of course, if this is the beginning of your piece and you don't want the track to start at 96 beats per minute, you just want 85 0.6137 BPM to play from the beginning. Well, of course, you can make that adjustment. I could come over here, and come to the tempo nodes and what I could do would be to say okay I don't need this one I'm going to just throw it away and I'm going to set bar one as the tempo start point for this particular region so this second option set average volume from the region that you've played is the second and really musical way in which you can use free tempo recording I've just played my phrase again. And this time, what I want to do is to recognize that I've already got a part within this piece and that I like the tempo that I'm working at. I can't play this piano phrase at the speed that I'm working to. Let's imagine that's true. That happens all the time. I'm often working at speeds. I can't simply play the parts that I want to sort of play in. So what I want to do instead is to conform the tempo of the project that I know I want to work to, to this part, to see whether or not, logic can um, conform that region to the speed at which I want to work. So in other words, I want to apply the project tempo to the region. Now, before I hit record, let's just have a quick look. You can see grayed out in the background that the tempo, in fact, that I want this project to be is 100 beats per minute. And so what I'm hoping is that free tempo recording will allow those notes to be analyzed and to conform to that tempo. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna hit apply. Well, that looks promising. So straight away now, my phrase, which you heard me play free, has conformed to this sort of four bar shape that I want it to. Let's put in the pad sound that was the first thing that I actually sort of put in place for this project and we'll see if the piano is working alongside it. I'll run it with a metronome. Well, that's pretty impressive. I reckon I played that piano phrase even a little bit more slowly than in the previous examples that we looked at. And suddenly Logic's been able to analyze where it thinks the downbeat comes and it's been able to sort of make it sort of fit alongside another part. And it's basically said, you will play back at the speed of the rest of the project. And obviously my project is really in its early stages. But if it was already quite a fully fledged production and I wanted to play in a phrase rather than draw it or in some way have to sort of drop the tempo in order to accommodate it, this is a really nice way of being able to work. Now, one thing I would definitely say is that in all of these examples, I've slightly looked to see where the bar two starts. In other words, if I had started any of these phrases obviously in bar one or much later into my project, I'd be much less optimistic that Logic would be able to analyze them and work out where I wanted them to go. As I say, it's not a magic bullet. So I've definitely sort of tried to make the first note that I've played arrive at around sort of bar two. But there's no doubt that free tempo recording is willing to do some really interesting things in terms of analyzing your performances and then saying, okay, well, what do you wanna do with them? And the fact that there are all three of those options, I think is a really powerful feature.